When I was in China, uh, the one-child policy began, and I think that, hands down, is the, the largest destruction of human capital that the world has ever seen. Uh, up until a few years ago, uh, Communist Party leaders in China were actually bragging about having eliminated 400 million people from the Chinese population uh, through forced abortion. In fact, back in 2012, uh, in Washington, D.C., uh, I was in a meeting with the former Minister of Health of the People's Republic of China, uh, claiming exactly that number of births had been, what he said, averted by the one-child policy. Now, it turns out that you can't kill off 400 million of the most productive, enterprising, hardworking people on the planet without doing severe damage to your economy over time. And that, in fact, has, 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 is what has happened. Uh, not only, of course, is it a huge human tragedy, uh, the loss of all those children, the forced abortions and sterilization of, of all of those women who suffered greatly mentally and physically as a result. But think about what that means now in terms of these, uh, well, 70 million empty apartment buildings. Uh, the young men and women who would have married and started families and purchased those apartment buildings, perhaps, uh, were killed decades ago. And uh, they, you, cannot, you cannot bring them back to life now. So in killing off half of the last two generations, uh, China has, uh, the Chinese Communist Party has killed off uh, its future, literally. Uh, the only future that you know, a family has is its children. The only future that a nation has are its families and its children. And uh, the Chinese Communist Party, uh, what I call the biggest killing machine in human history by far, has uh, killed off uh, China's economic future by means of the 35 years of the one-child policy. Now, they didn't wake up to that fact until 2016. The policy went into place effectively in Guangdong province in 1980 when I was first there. It ended in 2016. Why? Because the Chinese Communist Party woke up to the fact that it had, at that time, a labor shortage of 4.1 million workers in the country. Now, how do you create a labor shortage in the most populous country on earth. Well, killing off 400 million people will uh, pretty much put you in that position. Uh, and since then, the Chinese Communist Party has been making increasingly desperate efforts to get the birth rate up. They announced a two-child policy in 2016, expecting a baby boom. They got a little tiny boomlet, and then the birth rate continued to fall. So. It was a year and a half ago they announced now that they were moving to a three-child policy, basically saying to the Chinese people, the surviving young men and young women who had survived the one-child policy, basically saying you can now be fruitful and multiply. And the young people in China said, no, we're not interested. You've told us for almost four decades that, that children are expensive uh, and, uh, and that we should stop at once. At, at, at having children, we should stop at one child. And now you're telling us that we should have two or three. Uh, we're not interested. Marriage rates continue to decline in China, and the birth rate continues to decline. Uh, the birth rate now is probably the lowest that we have seen in China uh, over the last century. There were fewer than 10 million babies born in China last year. And even though there are very few forced abortions now in China, except for among uh, minorities and persecuted groups. Uh, there are now many more abortions in China than there are live births, which again does not bode well for the future of the country. You know, it's, it's, it's astonishing to me that Deng Xiaoping fell for the Western idea of overpopulation uh, back in 1980 and announced a one-child policy, thinking that that was going to be the high road to economic development, to China joining the first rank of nations, to the Communist Party being empowered by economic growth to build a military uh, capable of dominating the world. They thought that in the 1980s. Now I think they're beginning to realize that, that they have, in effect, strangled the China dream of world domination in the cradle. Because with China's economy on the downturn, 
with China's population aging and dying more rapidly than any human population has in the history of the planet. Uh, the 21st century will not belong to China, uh, in part because of the continued misrule of the Chinese Communist Party, but in large part because of the killing off of half of the last two generations. Projections now that, that, that I've made looking into the future that show that by 2070, or maybe as early as 2060, the population of the United States will probably be larger than that of the population of China. Now, communist parties always kill, sometimes they kill slowly, sometimes they kill quickly by execution. Uh, the one-child policy has been a kind of uh, a slow death warrant uh, for the Chinese people. And by the end of this coming century, if the birth rate stays at around one per woman over her reproductive lifetime, we're looking at only having about 400 million Chinese alive, down from 1.4 billion today. And that's uh, the achievement of the Chinese Communist Party, the killing off of the majority of the Chinese people over time. China's population is actually falling, is decreasing from year to year. China's pop filling, uh, filling fewer cradles than coffins today. And that's a sad, sad fact. So, so what that means is the demographic dividend that you got from having very few children and young people staying in the workforce, especially young women, contributed to China's rapid economic growth. It contributed to the military buildup. It contributed to its strategic expansion. That, that demographic dividend is gone. Instead, as the number of working age people declines, we'll see labor costs go up, and uh, China hasn't transitioned yet to a rich country. It is still a middle-income country. Now, you can say, well, Japan got old, and South Korea got old, Taiwan got old. A lot of countries on the world have gotten old over time. We see that in Europe as well. But all of those countries got rich before they grew old. They grew rich before they grew old, which meant they had the resources to continue to prosper even as the population was aging and the workforce was starting to level out and shrink. China doesn't have that luxury. China is still a middle-income country. It is still relatively poor. Hundreds of millions of people are still relatively poor in China. China is growing old before it grew rich. And uh, there's no way out of that demographic trap that the Chinese Communist Party has set for the Chinese people. And this is a baby bust, I think, that explains why China's economy will have a hard time recovering from its current problems. Regardless of what mix of economic incentives uh, the government puts in place, regardless of how much uh, they lower the interest rates or so try to subsidize exports or engage in any of the other things that they would like to do, they can't make up for you know, 400 million missing people. They can't make up for 100 million empty cradles. That resource, the ultimate resource, the human being, cannot be replaced. It is irreplaceable. Don't forget to subscribe to our alerts newsletter and you'll never miss an episode.